Before we get into today's video, I would like to thank all of my lovely channel members and especially my lovely darling stewards. Bella Mare, Husky HD, Hopeful, Mystic Jade 111, Giovanni Moretti, Twilight Mia, Angry Boxman, Hella, Melofia, Anonymous Weep, and Nicodemus D. Thank you for your support and also a huge thank you for all of my darling mates for your continued support. Now I hope you enjoy the video and please remember to like, comment and subscribe. Thank you. My demon name is Miss Holmes. I'm a torture sommelier. It is my job to continue the work of what the Hellborn used to do. Punish wicked souls, make them regret to ever be born, deliver justice to the people wronged by them. You smirked. You have no idea how many people come to me. Imagine waking up one day in hell and realizing that the guy you work with at your adorable little corner store just happens to also be the guy who killed you. Well, that's just how hell works. It's the melting pot of mankind. In some instances, <laughs> literally. You lean forward in your chair, gently tap against the cheek of the demon sitting before you. He was bound to his chair, his feet nailed to the floor, blood seeping past the metal. Behind you, a double-sided mirror, which was hiding an observation room, inside sitting three people. One was the poor victim of this monster, the other two the demons who owned your soul, and the ones who allowed you to operate as the torture sommelier. Vox, the TV demon, and Valentino, the pimp prince of hell. The victim had come to your office three weeks ago. She was one of Valentino's girls, used to being treated like a toy, but... When she sat before you in your office, you could tell this had gotten a little too far. Her body was in bad shape. Normally, something demon regeneration handled, and right now she was free of any damages, but the mental scars were still left. What he did to her was enough to make him Valentino blush, and she wanted revenge. And it was also the pimp who sent her to you. Tortures of Maliers worked hidden under various overlords. Your role to punish, not to permanently execute. No, that's what memory parasites were for. Though arguably, you came quite close to it. The trash before you went by the name of Roach. In a cons to his namesake, he traded in low-level drugs, undercutting regular dealers. A small fry, a small fry with anger issues. I'm going to turn you into my bitch tonight, and tomorrow, and next week, every day as a matter of fact. What I'm going to do with you, you humped, will take a long, long, long time to recover from. The room you were in was filled with various instruments of torture. Things whose implications alone usually were enough to make people grovel at your feet to not experience them. You stood up, snapping your fingers, causing three shadow puppets to appear, a trick taught to you by the radio demon Alistair. Admittedly, yours weren't as sophisticated. They had the appearance of bipedal cows with sharp, long talons for fingers. Snapping a second time, they proceeded to grab metal batons that were hanging from the walls before mercilessly beating the man, specifically focusing on Roach's limbs. Yet earlier punched his teeth out with sandfield gloves to shut him up, so there was no need for them to harm his precious little head now. After all, it would kill him too fast, and then he'd need to regenerate for a couple of days. Once his body was mangled and broken enough, the next finger snap occurred. 
Your shadow puppets were only able to follow a singular command of yours. At least you are good enough at handling them, so you didn't have to actually say the commands that you needed them to do. Two of the puppets grabbed the demon under the shoulders, while the third began pulling the nails out of his feet. He was quite unable to resist now. <laughs> Not that he... He didn't resist, obviously. Not that he could with how mangled his body was now. He then stepped aside and snapped again, which caused the third demon to move over to a strange contraption. It was a wooden wheel with a metal rim attached to a pole. The demon vomited on the floor from the pain. His body was probably filled with all matter of thoughts right now anyways. Would you like to know an interesting little fact about humanity? See, we are much more creative than demons. Ever read Dante's Inferno? Probably not. You said and scoffed. With her lackeys, you bound the demon around the wheel, wrapping his noodly broken arms around the wood before securing him with barbed wire. He was still conscious, but why was a mystery to you? But a welcome one. A razor strip was located beneath the wheel, its blades poking out of the wood they were embedded in, just far enough that they would definitely cut for the demon's stomach. This is called a breaking wheel, he explained. He was weakly breathing out of his mouth while his eyes were focused on you. Sometimes referred to as a Catherine wheel, based on an old legend about Saint Catherine of Alexandria. She, according to the legend, was a noble, studious princess who protested the Roman Emperor. While in prison, she even convinced the Emperor's wife of Christianity. <coughs> he growled weakly. I know, I know, I talk too much. You snapped your hand again, causing the puppets to start turning the wheel, while you stepped in front of the mirror. You're dressed in black leather clothes, with a thick brown leather apron, it was to avoid the blood. Your hair was pulled up into a long ponytail to keep it out of your face, while you worked. Your hands were folded behind your back. And regardless of what anyone was thinking, you continued your story. For her crime, St. Catherine was sentenced to death by the same instrument you're experiencing right now. You heard the noise of his flesh being diced through by the razors. You heard his pain screams. They were so loud they were almost ringing in your head. He must be in unmeasurable pain right now, but he was a demon. He would not die from this. In fact, he'd never die from this. But as the legend goes, the wheel broke upon her touching it. Divine intervention. <sighs> they then just simply beheaded her. <laughs> Little simple if you ask me. I would have whipped her until she stopped breathing. You see, whipping is actually a very good way to torture someone, even though it sounds rather simple. With a smile, you turned around. <laughs> but it seems that divine intervention won't be happening today with you, hmm? You walked forward until you were next to the wheel. You ordered your puppets to stop. His face hung before yours. His entire body covered in blood. He had stopped screaming as his vocal cords had finally given up. A disgusting, wet noise was coming out of his bloody throat. While the red liquid dripped from his body on the pristine white floor. Demons are fun. Really, you admitted. We regenerate our bodies. We have special needs, 
powers, even resistances. On Earth, I needed to be careful to not overdo it too quickly. After all, what is punishment when you die? You gently rubbed over his chi with your gloved hand. But down here, I can be creative. Funnel, you ordered with an outstretched hand. The puppet quickly delivered it to you. You shoved the plastic tube into the man's throat. Roach gurgled. Liquid, you purred. With a deep bow, a shadow delivered to you a glass. Carafe filled with what seemed to be water. Your grin was devastatingly evil. You see, Hellborn lack human creativity. That's one of the reasons they let Hell become New York, but more fun. You then poured the liquid into his broken throat, and it didn't take long for his body to convulse as weakly as it already was, and his chest burst open into a violent flood of red. You see, it were us who introduced hell to sulfuric acid, for instance. It's colorless, odorless, viscous enough to be confused for water. <laughs> Do you enjoy my little cocktail? You then snapped your fingers one last time. The silent order was to continue this, spinning the wheel and periodically filling his belly with acid, occasionally with water instead, just to spice things up, to surprise him, make him guess, until the wheel broke on its own, be it from the repeated application of acid or the wood simply breaking due to use. It would take weeks, maybe even months. And your puppets obliged. As you left the room, you hoped that the little show was satisfactory to your audience. And that the poor woman Roach had hurt so much was at peace now. You know, I really loved your performance tonight. Uh-huh. You lean back in your seat, a clothing magazine in your hand. As the demon behind you was handling various alcohol-filled bottles. After you left Roach in the torture chamber, you had been invited by Vox to celebrate a job well done. Something he usually did, hoping you'd get into his pants. Though usually, it was the other way around. You adjusted your thick rimmed glasses as you read the articles, disinterested. During torture sessions, you wore contacts. It was quite annoying dropping them during whipping sessions after all. Or any other more physically involved tortures. But contacts also made your eyes feel itchy, and you hated that. So you only wore them during work hours. Vox stepped from behind the couch you were sitting on, with two glasses in his hands, placing one on the table in front of you, before throwing himself into the pillows next to you. Like a diva, he leaned back, taking a sip from his glass, while your eyes shot up from your magazine, only to immediately return. You know I don't drink. Ah, come on, Miss Holmes. Or should I say, Sam? <laughs> Please, do it for me. I invited you. Samantha Holmes. That was your full hell name. Most demons chose singular words for their names, but you preferred the order of a full one. Without looking up from the article you were reading, or more, pretending to read, Vox was, after all, more receptive when he felt as if he was being ignored, or at least not the most important thing in the world. 
kind of cute in a pathetic sort of way. You reached for the glass, took a very tiny sip, smacked your lips, and then grimaced. The drink was a Costa del Sol, in a very tall glass. It was a relatively light and tropical cocktail, made out of two parts white rum, one part sweet vermouth, one part sugar syrup. A half part lemon juice rounded out with three parts of club soda. It was refreshing, and meant to capture the essence of the Mediterranean. When mixed to perfection, it awoke images of the sunny shores of southern Spain in the drinker's mind, transporting them to their beachside island paradise with every sip. And Vox was a great bartender. But, without changing your expression, not even by a millimeter, you instead said, "It's disgusting." Ah, oh, come on! It isn't that bad. I think it's pretty good. You closed the magazine, throwing it on the table, and stood up, stepping before the TV demon with a disgusted expression. I was certain. There was a scary fire behind your eyes, Miss Holmes. He stuttered and blushed. Are you willing to eat those words? He looked up at you as you kicked off one of your pumps. You were dressed in your office clothes, no longer the heavy black leather gear. It was a short black skirt and a tight blouse. Challengingly, Vox looked up at you. <laughs> yeah, right. As if I'm scared of. <gasps> Without listening to the rest of his sentence, you shoved your naked foot into his mouth. Shocked, he stared at your leg. Fine then, drink up, TV boy. Slowly, sensually, you began pouring the glass down your leg. You watched as his Adam's apple moved up and down. Almost desperately, he swallowed the booze that was entering his mouth. His tongue wiggling against your big toe like a slimy little snail. Every time he gulped, the trickle of booze, the eyes on his screen face lit up ever so slightly. He was excited. Well, you felt nothing, but that's exactly the feeling he was chasing with you. Once the glass was empty, you pulled your foot out of his mouth. His head twitched forward as if he was trying to attempt to keep it there, but you left him sitting there with his mouth half open. In disbelief, he exhaled. Damn it. Again, you had taken control of the situation. Ah, uh, come on, Miss Holmes. Just once, let me be the top. You scoffed as you stared him down. <laughs> Do you want to see me naked tonight or not? He blushed, looking to the side. Actually, I do. In fact, he admitted. Then be a good little baby boy and get naked for mommy. You then walked towards the door leading to Vox's bedroom, unbuttoning your blouse on the way, dropping it next to you on the floor, with a hum. But before you entered his bedroom, you turned your head and said with a smirk at the still perplexed sitting Vox, "You have two minutes. Once I put my clothes back on, got it, little man." 